it was in a period of maybe two to three weeks uh, where I went from full mobility to, you know, can't walk a couple blocks anymore to can't walk to the other end of the parking lot. And then pretty soon I was almost uh, totally immobile from the waist down. So that was pretty scary. I've had people that are close to me who basically said that, you know, they don't really think what I have is real. I think at different times people have suspected that the diagnosis is an excuse to avoid work, which it's not. And I try to be understanding about what they must be seeing, because sometimes they can see me walk, and then sometimes I seem not to be able to. And why is that? My FND was triggered by a physical injury. So I felt first a shooting pain in the nerves, and then I felt this icy kind of numbness rising from the bottom up, which is a little bit like wearing a latex glove on the inside of your skin. It turns out there's a whole raft of ways of ruling in FND. So typical clinical features of FND that you only see in FND and you put them together as a neurologist and you're able to recognize a familiar scenario, a bit like how we diagnose migraine. So there isn't a scan test for migraine. You know, until recently, there wasn't one for Parkinson's disease, for example, but we could still know what Parkinson's disease is when we see it. So in FND, uh, we're looking for, for example, if someone's got a weak leg, we're looking for various clinical signs that show us that there's a problem with voluntary movement. Normally, the more someone tries, the worse it actually is for them to do it. But we can demonstrate using the examination that automatic movements are normal. People with functional seizures, so for example, someone that falls down, lies still with their eyes closed for several minutes, there's only one thing in medicine that produces that clinical phenotype, and that's functional seizure. Studies have shown that we can remake reliable diagnosis, certainly as reliable as any other condition that we see in neurology. So yeah, it was a lot. They came back and they said, well, it's like good news, you know, everything's fine. But now by that point, you know, I was shuffling my feet. I was using a walker to get to the bathroom. And then as soon as, you know, they came back and tell me everything's fine, there's nothing wrong. So well, how is this possible? Like now I can't move my leg at all. Basically, my explanation was less than five minutes. Um, it was basically, you have FND. It's this thing that used to be called conversion disorder. And I freaked out. I went back to the hotel room, and I just freaked out. And I told my wife that I wish I had MS, because I could live with that. And it's almost as if he was blaming the FND on my anxiety. I think even as a healthcare professional, like be super mindful what you say to patients because you don't know for you, you're going to forget that you ever said that, but that is something that they will hold on to for such a long time. I think the biggest thing that she said to me that honestly made me cry when I was in the, the exam room was that she said, look, like, I believe you. And then she took the time to explain about like the distraction techniques. And I try to explain that the brain is not really one thing. It's a community of things that talk to each other, kind of like a group of musicians um, in performance. And that basically, if those patterns get disrupted, they can sometimes stay disrupted. And that can produce a physical disability because the brain controls the body. I felt like I was an ominous narrator in my life, the one that's not in control of the story, that just kind of describes it as it sees fit. I think that was the most challenging is that a lot of times I felt like I wanted to participate and I couldn't, or I wanted to be connected to my body, but I couldn't. When I first got the diagnosis, I think I was self-blaming because 
there seemed no other available explanation at that time. And so learning about it and learning about the up-to-date understanding of FND was completely life-changing for me. They are essentially treatments that help retrain the brain, getting people to do things that you'd never ask someone to do if they had a stroke or MS. For example, there are patients who discover during physio that they can run on a treadmill, even though they can't walk properly. That's because their running program isn't corrupted, even though their walking program is. That seemed ridiculous to me because I had tried many times to speak <laughs> doing all sorts of stuff. And I didn't see why expecting different should make a difference, you know? But I tried it and it worked. And she explained, you know, someone with MS or someone with Guillain-Barre, hey, like this would not be possible. But do you see how when we make voluntary movements involuntary, that now, you know, you're able to execute them? What we would do is talk as we go up and down the stairs just to distract and go up. Sometimes it would be singing, sometimes talking, um, sometimes like the counting by threes. The math was a big thing. I have to say the math um, was like a huge factor in terms of distractibility techniques. So finding little ways into that automatic movement using music or creative ways, but based on the person's experience. So for example, a patient that I had who had been a very good ballet dancer but couldn't walk properly. And in the course of physiotherapy, they used her experience of ballet dancing to bring back a much more natural and normal movement. And then she progressed from that to be able to walk again. One thing I didn't really understand before getting a diagnosis is the idea that one thing can cause the disorder and then another thing can keep it going. And for example, you can develop anxiety as a result of having FND and have your life go completely off track. And you're trying to deal with this terrible disorder that nobody really understands. So I think that was really, really helpful. And just his holistic ability to bring in both the psychological side and the, the physical side as needs be was great. That psychological recovery was super, super important. And I do think that when we talk to patients, it's important to mention both. Research shows as well that it's the best uh, approach to take. And I really, really do think that it needs to be like a holistic approach 